Welcome back to another Be Inspiration faith-based video. Thank you guys for returning every week to share this moment with me. Uh, I was, it's just been a re really weird week, like an emotional kind of roller coaster type of week, up and down, up and down. Um, and it's nice when you can see growth in yourself, how, you know, you don't take so long to be on this <laughs> you know, spiral where you could be like, all right, let's get it together um, and, and catch yourself. That's that's the goal, right? The goal is to not stay in dark places and weary places and heavy places too long, right? Because you don't need the, your mind to become the devil's playground. You really need to catch yourself and say, okay, I knew that trouble would come. <laughs> I knew that trouble would come. However, God is still with me. And that's what I want to talk about because I had come across this uh, scripture. It's from Psalm 139 and it stuck with me. It showed up on my Bible app a couple of weeks ago and it really stuck with me. So I like sent it to myself so I could come back to it and talk about it. And it's so fitting right now because it really fits into everything that I've been going through. And uh, the title was even there, you know, that God is with us no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through. And I'm going to read the scripture to you so that you guys can kind of have context. So it's Psalm 139 verses one through 10. And it goes, uh, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know, when I sit down or stand up, you know, my thoughts, even when I'm far away, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm do going to say, even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. So I thought this was beautiful. This is uh, David. He was the king of Israel for like a thousand, well, a thousand years prior to Christ, uh, the birth of Christ. Um, and so he wrote many of the Psalms, which are sort of like almost poetic and worship, you know, uh, passages in the Bible, right? And this one is just kind of talking about there is nowhere that we can go where God will not be there for us, right? And this made me think about, I was actually watching another YouTuber who is a faith-based YouTuber, Melody Elisa is her name. I hope I'm saying her last name correct. And uh, she was talking about uh, the story of Moses and kind of ties in here as well, how Moses, he was a Jew and he, there was a period of time where um, I forget who their leader was at the time or the king or the ruler at the time had ordered that all of the uh, children born under the age of two or something like that be murdered. I might be butchering this, but it's something to that effect, right? All the children be murdered. So Moses's mom, who was a Jew, and she was trying to obviously save her son put him, wrapped him in a basket, put him in the river and sent him down the river, hoping that he would survive so that she did not have to kill him, right? Or that he would not get murdered. Uh, the person who raised Moses was, uh, I wish I knew her name. I shouldn't even go this deep because I really don't remember all of the details like that. But the person who raised Moses, she was part of, she was an Egyptian and she lived in the Egyptian palace. And so therefore, Moses was raised as uh, royalty. She found him. She was like, oh, can I keep him? And so <laughs> she kept him and raised him as her own child. So Moses, a Jew, was raised in the Egyptian palace in royalty while the Jews were in captivity, while they were being slaves, right? And so Moses then sees, um, you know, as he's growing up, he grows up with Pharaoh, who is becomes, you know, the leader of uh, Egypt at the time. And they're kind of like friends or brothers they kind of grow up as. Moses sees, as he's out and about one day, sees one of the Egyptian, I guess, guards uh, being harsh with one of the Israel Israelites. And he, and he decides that he was not having it and he murdered the person. 
Now somebody saw him and so he got scared and he fled. He left into the wilderness, right? So he was somewhat of a young man at this time. I can't remember like what part of his life was. I would say somewhere between 20s and 40 he was. And then he then, you know, fled. So he was in the wilderness and God was with him the entire time. Not only was God with him when he was a baby and he put him in the in the river, he was with him while he was living the good life living in the palace and being raised as royalty. He was with him when, you know, unfortunately when he um, committed that sin of killing somebody and he was with him in the wilderness. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years and God had a whole uh, purpose for his life that would span generations that would ripple throughout the ages, right? And it, it probably felt for him being in the wilderness for these all these years, 40 years that you know, where, where is God, right? Is God with me? Am I still accepted by God? Am I still loved by God? Am I still seen as a Jew? Am I still, you know, um, even accepted by my own people, you know, where I came from? Is that even, um, still part of who I am? Right. And so he has this whole experience too long to, to for me to tell you here, but you know, God sends him into Egypt to free um, God's people, right? Let my people go, he tells Pharaoh. And so ultimately he accomplishes that. And that's the whole basically legacy of the Jewish faith at this point. And um, really even is connected to the lineage of Jesus Christ, right? And so I say that to say, right? With the scripture that I read, how God is always with us no matter where we go, whether we're coming or we're going. If we try to hide, even when we feel weary, when we feel down, when we feel like we're in a dark place, when we feel like nothing is just going right. I was just uh, having a conversation with my husband about a season that we are experiencing and some things that we're dealing with. And, you know, although we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, we're like, boy, like when this is over, like it's really gonna, you know, things are really gonna turn around. And even though we felt like it's been a rough time and it's been sort of like a dark place and we've been challenged to keep our head up and do our best and make the most out of all of these situations, which we have, we noticed that God has been with us the entire time, that God has made a way even in the midst of everything that's been going on, he has connected all the dots. He, have, he has made every end meet. He has done exceedingly and abundantly above all we could have ever asked or think. You know, when you think like, okay, this is my worst, um, like this is the worst that can happen, right? Or we all have like these fears that we're like, ooh, if this ever happens, that's it. Um, it's over for me. You know, like I couldn't imagine this happening or I really would not want to have to experience that. And then God puts you through situations and circumstances and trials or allows them to happen. And you're like, hmm, I'm still, I still got my head above water. <laughs> like I'm still surviving. I'm still able to, you know, do many of the things that I still, you know, needed to do or wanted to do. Like, it wasn't as bad. You know why it's not as bad? Because God keeps us in the midst of it. When we're thinking about the bad things that could come, we're not thinking about God's peace, God's strength, God's um, perfect will, right? And the fact that when we are weak, that's when he is strongest. That's when God really shines. That's when God gets to floss and pop his collar and do all and do his thing because then we rely on him. Then we surrender. Then we will, uh, you know, speak to him. We will seek him. We will look for him because we know that we need something in that moment. And God's trying to teach us that it doesn't matter whether you're up you're, or you're down. You need to seek me in all seasons, in season and out of season, as they say. We need to seek him all the time. And that's kind of what I've learned. And I think I'm, you know, pleasantly um, happy to to hear that, that my husband has learned too. And God has dealt with us separately and together in his own way and has allowed us to grow and evolve through just his subtle masterful way of he, of he how he does things and that's why i've been talking about lately you know paying attention to what's going on and what are the lessons that we're learning in the spaces where god has us even in especially you know in the times of trouble and struggle but i'm getting off topic <laughs> so what I, what i was trying to get is that you know god has made a way during feast and famine and he wants 
us to what he wants us to do is to know that it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what season it is. Our number one priority is to seek God, you know, seek God and have a relationship with God and be in God's presence no matter what's going on. So think about how there are certain things in your life that is completely non-negotiable. Like I hope for most people, every single day you're going to brush your teeth, right? You're going to sleep and you're going to brush your teeth, right? The, the, the level of sleep or length or whatever that's going to happen doesn't, doesn't matter, but you, you will probably sleep every day and you will hopefully brush your teeth every day. As sure as those things are in your life and as sure as those things are cemented in your every single day schedule, there needs to be time with God. There needs to be acknowledgement, worship, prayer, communion, you know, like communion as in speaking and talking and uh, whether it be in your heart, in your head or whatever, it doesn't have to be in a special place. It could be anywhere you are, you in your heart and you are acknowledging God, you're thanking God, you are saying, God, um, thank you for every single moment, for every this and every that <laughs> that is going on, right? Anything that you could think of as being appreciative. And even when you're feeling those moments of heartache, when you, you know everything feels heavy and it feels like you can't go on, ask God, say, God, I need your help in this moment. Help me, please. Right. And he will answer. I talked about a few weeks ago when when Peter was trying to walk on water and he realized he started considering his own limitations as as a human. He was like, Jesus, help me, you know, or, you know, God, help me. And he was helped immediately. So uh, God wants us to cry out, <laughs> you know, and doesn't have to be cry out in a in a dramatic public type of way. But cry out as in seek him because he is always there. It is us who turns away, right? God's presence is uninterrupted. He is always there everywhere. Just like the scripture, the Psalm told us, no matter where you are, you know, you, you are in a valley, you're on a mountaintop, you're on a beach, you're in the desert, you know, winter, summer, spring and fall, he is always there. So I hope that this was helpful to you. This was kind of short and sweet, but I think that it was impactful because it really, you know, uh, made me rem remember and be reminded about God's consistency and how, how many people have somebody so consistent in their lives, right? All day, every day. <laughs> so take courage, um, be encouraged, take heart that God is there. No matter what you're going through, you can always turn to him and cry out and find peace. Thank you so much for listening. Please leave me a comment and let me know, has there ever been a time that you've been going through and you know that it was a tough time and it was something that you thought that you was not going to make it through, but in the midst of that thing, you recognize God was there and you recognize what God was doing and how he was moving. And if you haven't, let's talk about that too. So leave me a comment, right? Don't forget to like and subscribe, subscribe. And I thank you all for watching. I love you. I pray that you have peace in your life and I will see you next time.